Welcome everyone, thanks for tuning back in. What I have in front of you today is a LED array, SMD 5050, some strips are RGB, red, green, blue, and uh, the majority of them are just white light, the 600K, uh, they call it daylight white. And a uh, big LED array, I'm gonna show you how to wire this, and I wanna show you some do's and don'ts, and things you need to know about amperage, and uh, everything involved to wire up an uh, LED array this size. Okay, so here is a close-up shot of the LED strips. Now, SMD 5050 just simply means that they're five millimeters by five millimeters on the LEDs, and even the RGBs are the same exact size. At least uh, it says it is on the website. So every three LEDs. You can see there's copper pads. Let me stay in frame. There's copper pads right here. And then an RGB, of course, you have the DC positive. These are all 12 volt. And then the, uh, the red, green, blue will be your negative wires. And alternating, you know, the controllers will tell uh, which, which color gets the voltage is the one that's going to be lit. And maybe one of them, maybe all of them. And uh, varying degrees based on what the controller sends to it. And the same works for the white ones. Every three LEDs is cuttable. You can cut them. The copper pads, as long as you stay right in the center of the copper pads, the LED strips will continue to work. But what a lot of people fail to understand is amperage in relation to what you're doing. Each strip of these was 16 point, uh, I think it said 16.4 feet, maybe five meters. Well, that is way too long. Even if you had the necessary power on your power supply to power it all in one time and power it from one end, it's way too long because you'll have voltage drop. By the time you get to the end of your strip, the last LED is going to be more dim than the first one because of voltage drop, and you're going to put an increased load and increased temperature requirement on the first few LEDs. So that's, a, that's, that's not how you wire these strips if you want to be efficient. If you have a strip that, that, that's that long, let's say, you know, X amount of distance, one good way to do it would be to wire it, you would hook up your positive and negative in the center of your strip. And the, effectively, the voltage drop across the strip would be half. You would lose half the voltage drop that you would if you wired it from one end, because it's going in both directions. Now you can wire them from each end, and that's even better because you can really essentially cut your voltage drop down to almost nothing depending on the length. Sometimes you might want to wire it on each end and in the middle. But I'm going to bring the camera back out and show you my plan because this is only six feet in length and we're going to get it a, little bit, a little bit more deep into the amperage and how I know how much to power this and what kind of power supply to use. Okay, so getting back into this, how I'm going to power this is going to be from the middle because it's only six feet long, I know that I will have a uh, minimal voltage drop across the LEDs and all of the resistors. I'll still keep bright LEDs and there won't be a, there won't be a difference in color or uh, brightness from the whites because uh, the minimal voltage drop at only six feet long. If you had five, a full five meters or 16 feet, you would need to either power it from both ends or power it in the middle. Power uh, from the both ends and the middle if you want to. You're trying to maximize efficiency and minimize heat draw, uh, over, over temperature increase from one end or where the power source is. And uh, I've done it. I've, I've uh, powered a full five meter strip before with enough power to do it, but uh, the LEDs closest to the power will burn out eventually because they get too hot. Too much, too much draw. Now, the I have some of these uh, my lights. Let me get these closer in frame here. Some of these my light controllers. They're 2.4 gigahertz RS. So it's going to be really cool. I'll be able to, you know, you, in this controller, we'll go through walls if you need it to. Three zones. Uh, the controller's capable of four, but they each receive 12 volts. And then they have the output. I can change the brightness, I can change the color of the RGBs, and I can also choose which zone is lit at each time. So it's a complicated wire, uh, but it's, it's all you have to do is get enough power from a power pack to each controller, and they have an output of six amps per channel. 
which is more than enough to do this LED array. I'm looking at about 23 to 24 amps. I have a 30 amp power controller here at 12 volt inverter. Uh, so uh, house current 110 goes in, 12 volts DC comes out into the controllers. And then uh, that's it. So I'll have to wire this up. It'll be a different video. And uh, But first I want to show you how I know how much all this draws. All right, so whether you like to, you're just a hobbyist and you like to mess with electronics or you're a master engineer, you need a variable voltage power supply. This happens to be a, I think it's a 5 to 30 volt, uh, or 0 to 30 volt, 0 to 5 amps. And I wish I had a bigger one that, that I could uh, power. I can't power this entire array with it because the output is only at 5 amps. But what I can do with it is use it to tell me exactly what each strip pulls. So all you have to do is turn it on make sure that you're set at 12 volts and I have the constant voltage set at 12 volts you can see that by right when I turned it on that was the indicator but right now it's only reading a half a volt whatever it's irrelevant because there's no current I don't have any current set so if I click my current try to get my hand out of the way if I click current you see it's reading at zero you know when I stop it goes away so I, I'm not able to select any kind of current at this point with no current there is no voltage so I'm gonna pull this up this little pad and I'm gonna just like the little pads I showed you previously I'm gonna hook alligator clips to them and hopefully I have a good connection it's hard to do these little pads without the soldering it changes things when you solder so I'm gonna click my current button click it again to go down to one tenth of one amp and I'm gonna turn this and you have to do it in a certain amount of time but I'm gonna turn it okay now there is one tenth of one amp which would be 100 milliamps and you can see I have started to create uh, light at 100 milliamps I'm only producing 8 volts so it's taking 8 volts at 100 milliamps to achieve what I'm trying to achieve let's go up further okay there's 300 milliamps it's 9 volts we're not even close to where we need to be okay 500 that's a half of 1 amp 10 10 volts. Let's go up all the way to 1 amp. Look at there, 12 volt. Let's go down. Okay, so at 900 milliamps, I'm only pulling 11.88 volts out of my uh, volt variable voltage power supply. So I know that at 900 milliamps, the strip is not pulling what it will pull. It's capable of more. So if I go up to 1 amp it's 12 volts if I go up to 1.1 amp it's still 12 volts so the difference is 0.9 and 1 amp so somewhere between 900 milliamps and 1 amp is uh, its full 12 volt supply so that's how you know how much it's going to pull and it's going to be a little bit different if uh, my power supply say it outputs at 13 volts which it's not going to because I'm going to set it to where it only produces 12 volts flat it's capable of 13 I think 13.6 volts but at that voltage let me turn down the uh, let me turn down the milliamps and let's, well, let's change the voltage to 13 volts so if I want to put 13 in it it's a 12 volt power supply you have to be careful when you do this because you don't want to see now I've kicked in it I can see a power difference I can see the brightness increase at 1.1 amps so at 1.1 amps that's 12.6 volts so I know that I need to make sure that the power supply that I used to, to uh, run these LEDs is only going to output 12 volts it's very important and you need quality meters I use a fluke I think it's a 77 yeah I use a fluke 77 uh, ohms meter and voltage tester so anytime you do this stuff don't just half-ass it make sure that you understand the voltage what everything pulls if this pulls uh, 12 uh, 1 amp at 12 volt I'm gonna count this at 1.2 just in a uh, overdo everything so if I make this at 1.2 then these other ones were actually pulling like 1.5 I'm gonna call them 1.5 so on my little ones just to make sure that I have a uh, I have a big enough power supply to power everything without getting hot and your power supply needs to be 25 percent hotter which is what I call hotter it needs to be able to produce more uh, current and total power 
than you're trying to power. So if you're trying to power five amps worth of LEDs and you know it's going to pull five amps, you don't need a five amp power supply. You need one bigger. Make everything run cool, everything will last longer, your LEDs will last longer. It's just better. Now I have to spend the next three hours of my life trying to figure out all the wiring that's going to take to get this thing going. So stay tuned for that.